lets us do this uh, because not all campuses have this opportunity and we get to talk to every incoming first year student and we think it's a really important topic we're glad to be here uh, we're gonna make you glad to be here so uh, with that being said we're gonna introduce ourselves so that you know who's talking to you tonight uh, I'm Cole I'm a third year landscape architecture student here at CSU I'm from Littleton Colorado anyone from Littleton uh, and I'm here tonight because sexual assault is such a huge issue. Uh, it affects so many people in my life. It affects me. And I want to be part of changing the culture and not tolerating sexual assault anymore. And I'm Marie. I'm a sociology major with a double minor in women's studies and ethnic studies. And I'm a super senior this year, so it's my victory lap. Um, but I'm from Loveland. Anybody from Loveland? All right, there we go. I see some hands. Um, the reason that I'm here today is because this is a topic that I'm very passionate about and it's something that affects my life personally. Hey everyone, my name is Cody. This will be my fourth year here at CSU and I'm a microbiology major. And so I always just like to ask, got any scientists in the room? Woo! Okay, that's good. Um, so uh, I'm from Cortez, Colorado. Anyone from Cortez? Okay, that's pretty usual. <laughs> um, and the reason I'm talking to y'all tonight is because I think the information that we're all about to learn goes a long way towards making us all much better human beings. Hi everyone, my name is Carissa. I'm a fourth year student, business management major with a women's studies minor. I'm from Fort Collins, Colorado. Who's with me? Well, you're all CSU Rams, so Fort Collins is your second home, so yay you. Congrats on being a Ram, that's super exciting. Uh, I'm here tonight because I identify as a survivor and I'm really passionate about this subject and I think it's really important for everyone here to understand. All right, so now that you know a little bit about us, I'm gonna let you know how this is gonna look tonight. Uh, we're gonna start and get everyone familiar with some of the terms we'll be talking about throughout the presentation and then we'll dive into consent and what that means and what that looks like. Then we're gonna talk about some different strategies towards ending sexual violence and then a way that you can be the best support system for survivors in your life. Uh, after our presentation, you'll have about 20 minutes with your OLs outside in groups to discuss everything that you've heard. Uh, we don't have time for comments or questions during our presentation, so if something comes up, uh, please just keep it in your head. We'll be walking around afterwards, so it, while you're in your groups, uh, raise your hand, come up and talk to us if you have feedback, questions about content, or how to get involved. Uh, that's what we're here for. Uh, that's why we're here, so we'd love to talk to anyone. Now. Um, with all that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into the presentation. All right, so the first thing we want to go over is create some guidelines, just so that we can have a safe space in here. So it's really important to understand at the WGAC, the Women and Gender Advocacy Center, we have a sex positive philosophy. And what that means is whether you're having a lot of sex, no sex at all, or anywhere in between there, that's totally cool with us, as long as there's consent. So all sexualities, all sexual practices, as long as there's consent. And a sex positive philosophy is also really important because it allows space to have these conversations and talk about sex. Because it's definitely something we don't talk enough about. And we know that currently on campus, 30% of CSU students are not currently sexually active. And when we say currently sexually active, well, we don't mean like right now. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully none of you are currently sexually active. <laughs> but if you are, um, please don't make eye contact with me. Uh, really appreciate that. Cool. 
Um, so we do really like to use humor. It's a really great way to get a point across. Uh, I think we're funny. I hope you think we're funny. If not, it's not a big deal. I don't know any of you. Um, but uh, that being said, that does not mean that we take this topic lightly at all. Statistically, we know that there are survivors of sexual assault and rape in the room. And we really want to respect them. And so we ask that everyone please use respectful language and behavior. Please don't talk on the side. Put your phone away. You can text your mom in an hour. It's not a big deal. And what we're just asking is please have respect. Just because something isn't impacting you doesn't mean it's not impacting someone around you. Uh, with that being said, I also want to emphasize the importance of self-care. We're going over some pretty heavy stuff tonight, and if you feel like you need to leave the room and get a drink of water, uh, step out and get a breath of fresh air, whatever you need to do to take care of yourself, we're all for that. And we also know that there's some meetings and time conflicts that overlap with our presentation, so if you have to leave for either of those, uh, feel free to do so, but please do so quietly. And now we just want to go over some legal definitions to make sure that everyone's on the same page. So the first one we want to talk about is sexual assault. And sexual assault is actually an umbrella term, so it encompasses acts such as rape, but it is not synonymous to rape. So the definition of sexual assault is any sexual act where the person performing the act has not obtained consent from the other person. So if I go to a party and someone comes up and grabs my ass, that is sexual assault. And we also want to talk about the definition of rape, which is the intrusion of the vagina, anus, or mouth of a person without their consent. And the weapon of intrusion can be a tongue, penis, finger, or other object. And it's really important to understand that this is Colorado's legal definition, because it's much more progressive than other states, because it allows for males to be victims, and it also allows for all identities to be included within it. So now that we all have some legal definitions and we're on the same page, we want to talk about some facts just to make sure that everyone in here understands the magnitude of the issue we're talking about. So first, we know that one in four women will be victims of sexual assault in their lifetime. And that usually happens between their sophomore year in high school to their sophomore year in college. And that's not to say that it doesn't happen before or after that time period, but we know that's the highest risk for women. Now, we also know that one in six men will be victims of sexual assault in their lifetime. For men, this looks a little bit differently, and this usually happens before a young man's 14th birthday. But that's not to say that it doesn't happen afterwards. What is important to realize is that a lot of men are coming to college having had this experience. And I really want to stress that being the victim of sexual assault does not make them any less of a man. So, uh, during our presentation, you might hear us use some gendered terms, or see skits where the male is a perpetrator and the female is a victim. And we really want to acknowledge that not all victims are female, and not all perpetrators are male. But statistically, more than 98% of perpetrators identify as male. And the vast majority of them identify as heterosexual. So, we're not saying that all men are perpetrators, that all men are rapists. That is not what we're saying. That is not what we want you to think. What we are saying is that the vast majority of perpetrators identify as male. And it's really important to understand that as we talk about this issue. And it's also really important to understand that sexual violence occurs in all communities, regardless of race, class, sexual orientation, or religion. It cuts across all identities. And it's also really important to understand that on a college campus, more than 97% of victims know their perpetrator. And we don't say that as a scare tactic, but we definitely want you to keep that in mind because we're going to be talking about risk reduction versus prevention strategies later. And our next category is songs about sex. Sex? Na na na, come on. Na 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 na, come on, come on, come on. Baby, let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about